And good evening, everybody, and welcome once again to the video sports page. This, of course, is the program where the emphasis is on local sports. I'm your host, Carl Pratt. Welcome to edition number 1148 for your viewing pleasure. Behind the glass, putting it all together for us once again this week, Rich Goulart with some technical assistance coming from Doug McAfee. We appreciate the efforts of our two guys behind the scenes helping to put our local sports program on the air. Well, I'll throw a few numbers at you and see if they ring a bell. How about number 25? How about number 1,000? How about number 11? And how about number 34? That'll be all be part of our stories during this week's edition of our program as we put some focus on a very good wrestling program at Plymouth South. Talk about an outstanding basketball player for Silver Lake. We'll talk about a great matchup between Silver Lake and Duxbury as far as ice hockey is concerned on Wednesday. And before we say goodnight tonight, we'll take a look back at uh, Carver High School as the girls' varsity basketball team was in action. Carver took on visiting Rockland just the other night. But we're going to begin this week's edition of our program by talking about the Plymouth South girls' varsity basketball team, which earlier this week came up with a lopsided victory against visiting Dennis Yarmouth. The final count there was 45-23, and it wasn't even that close as the Panthers took control very early in this basketball game. Christina Jaros, one of the top players for this team, finished the game with 12 points, but she had 10 in the first quarter as Plymouth South set the stage. Head coach for Plymouth South is Summer Ivan, who had a great career for Plymouth North High School. Her team is now 13-4. and four. They'll be back in action next Monday night as they take on Marshfield. Marshfield's one of four teams to own a victory against Plymouth South this year. Well, following her team's convincing victory last week against D.Y., I spent some time with Summer Ivan. Okay, let's continue with this week's edition of the video sports page. A bit of an echo here in the Plymouth South Middle School Gymnasium. This is following a convincing victory by the Plymouth South Lady Panthers as they knocked off visiting D.Y. here on a Tuesday night. Now I'm pleased to be joined by head coach Summer Ivan, your team right in the hunt for the ACL championship. Yes, we kind of control our own destiny at this point. We have two league losses along with Falmouth, and we have two more league games coming up. I gotta ask you, what do you know about this team now that maybe you didn't know at the beginning of the season? Well, coming into the season, I wasn't sure how we were gonna be. We had a couple returners, but then there was a lot of spots to fill. Fortunately for me, I had two freshmen coming up that have a lot of basketball experience that filled those spots very nicely, and Tessa Harkenrider and Maddie Norris. But let's talk about that. When you get bodies like that that fit in right away, at what point did you feel there was chemistry between the freshmen, the juniors, and the seniors? I think, you know, game one, um, our opening game against Pembroke, we started off a little bit slow, but when the freshmen came on, they were a good spark. Um, but I wasn't quite sure how it was going to be. But the two league games following, Sandwich and Falmouth, huge wins for us at home right before Christmas break. And they really came up and played really well. Like Maddie and Tessa both combined for 30 points against Falmouth the first time around. All right, so let's talk about it. When you get these two freshmen to participate and uh, mm. give you quality minutes, were they key positions for you? It's not like they were freshmen who were big girls that would have bumped Jaros out or somebody like that. Yeah, you know, um, I think we graduated a few guards last year and, and the year before, so it was important in that position. We were really looking, we had a couple starters, but we were really looking for somebody to fill the positions of the people coming off the bench, so I think they did nice doing that. Right, let's talk about tonight's game, a team effort. You defeated a, a team in DY in, in rather convincing fashion. Yeah, um, DY's been struggling this year, so it was good to come in here tonight and let every get everybody some minutes and everybody got to play tonight. Um, I thought we played pretty well in the first half. Our second half was a little sloppy and little things we need to fine tune here and there for the next games coming up. But do you find your team plays to the level of the competition? Sometimes, but I also put a different mix of people out there. Like Christina is used to playing with Becca Laudermilk all the time, but I had her playing with a different forward just to mix things up to see what we could have. Um, Faith Kraft, who's a senior, who's a very dedicated player to the program, got a start tonight. She usually doesn't start. So I just kind of mixed up who was also playing, so that also kind of messes with chem team chemistry. All right, following this convincing victory, the Lady Panthers from Plymouth South have their eighth victory in the ACL. As I mentioned at the top of this interview, you're very much in the hunt for the league mm -hmm. championship. How's a week off before your next game going to affect this team? 
Well, I kind of strategically place practice. I'm actually giving them a day off on a Wednesday, like a random Wednesday off. But we are going to practice the four days before the game, try to prepare. They, Marshfield has two players that we really want to focus on, try to prepare some defenses that are going to take them out of their game and focus on that. All right, so it's Marshfield next Monday. The Panthers will be looking for revenge. Then it's Plymouth South, then it's Whitman Hanson. Do you take these last three games, like tournament-type games, to get ready for the postseason? Yeah, you know, we just want to get better and better at what we're doing. We had a little lull. January was not a good month for the Panthers. Even though our record doesn't demonstrate it, we didn't play well in a lot of those games in January. So our big, we had a big win in Falmouth on Friday, in February 1st. So it's a new month, a new team. We need to get better at certain things that we don't do well at, and we're going to concentrate on those things in the next three games because we don't want our season to end with our regular season or our first tournament game. We want to keep going. Uh, we're going to back up the clock several years where Summer Ivan was part of some very successful Plymouth High School basketball teams, a 1,000-point scorer herself. You were part of some very successful teams. Think about when you played and what team you're coaching now. How do those two teams compare? Because just the fact that you have a lot of talent on both sides is what I'm trying to get at um it's very i don't know it's hard for me to compare the two teams uh but kind of similar you know the teams back well, how about in this how about comparing the confidence level as your team this year takes the court and they go out there expecting to win yeah i think they expect to win and i think the loss to marshfield here and the loss at sandwich was really a little rattling to them like we've been doing so well and you know i think the sandwich game especially was a little bit of a wake-up call we need to do a little bit better if we're going to try to compete in these games. We'll talk about competing. They're right very much in the hunt for the ACL championship tied with Falmouth, but the Panthers have destiny in your own hands. You went out and it's all yours. Yeah, we control our own destiny. Um, if we win out, it's ours alone. Well, Falmouth still only has two losses, but we can control ourselves. We don't need any help if we just take care of it. Well, listen, we appreciate your time. Congratulations on a fine season to this point. Keep it rolling. Thank you very much. All right, head coach Summer Ivan of the Plymouth South Lady Panthers joining us this week on the video sports page. We'll continue with more, so stay with us. All right, as we continue to roll on, congratulations to Summer for another fine season with the Panthers. Well, how about over in Duxbury? Let's talk about that girls' varsity basketball team. 14-1 overall, 10-0 in Patriot League action. They had another convincing victory back on Tuesday. Hingham was the latest victim, 62-31. to They got loads and loads of talent with this Duxbury team. They were led once again in this game by Michaela Norton. Michaela led the team as she threw in 26. Meanwhile, Kate Norton threw in 12 more, and Bridget Quilty threw in 10 more. Three players in double figures as Duxbury had a convincing victory. Well, you want to talk about high school basketball, congratulations to first-year head coach Sean Donovan and the Silver Lake boys varsity basketball team. Silver Lake this week picked up a victory against Quincy on the road, and they did it in the fourth quarter as they wiped out a big deficit. They also went 10 for 10 from the foul line in that fourth quarter, which allowed them to get that 61 to 60, rather 71 to 63 victory avenging a loss they took at home earlier this year against Quincy. In this basketball game, Tucker Bouchard led Silver Lake with 29 points. By the way, with that victory, Silver Lake is qualified for the postseason. Now, one more note. Congratulations to Tucker Bouchard, who last Friday night at home helped lead Silver Lake to a victory against Whitman Hanson. It was a bit of an upset against a very good Panther team from Whitman Hanson. In the process, Bouchard scoring his points on that night got career point number 1,000. There haven't been that many 1,000-point scorers in Silver Lake basketball history. The all-time scorer for Silver Lake boys basketball is Chris Conroy. What's interesting about Chris, his dad also scored 1,000 points for Plymouth Carver High School way back in the late 60s. All right, let's continue with our program. Remember at the top, I gave you some numbers. How about 25? Let's talk about number 25 and where that fits in with our next story. This past Monday night at the Plymouth South Gymnasium, the Panthers knocked off New Bedford in high school wrestling for their 25th victory in the regular season. Coach Mark Ranger and Sean Petrosino, co-head coaches, lead the Panthers. They're now 25-0 in the regular season. 
Well, I had an opportunity to pick up some highlights of a few different matches. Let's enjoy the Panthers as they enjoy some great success. Hi, I'm Sean Duncan, Jr., heavyweight. So Plymouth South at home against New Bedford, and as you can tell from our graphic right there, Plymouth South 25-0 during the regular season. They're getting set for the postseason, which will be coming up this coming weekend. Hopefully the South sectionals will go off, but weather may have an awful lot to say about that. Well, they had some terrific success this year, and I had an opportunity. We got a sneak preview there. We're going to have all the boys that played prominent roles for this Plymouth South wrestling program introduce themselves because there's an awful lot of kids that are playing key roles for Coach Mark Oranger, Coach Petrosino. You know what? There are only 13 weight classes, but there are a lot of kids that got key wins this season. Let's take this opportunity to find out who those Panthers are. Junior, heavyweight. Hi, I'm Dylan Finley, sophomore, 106. Hi, I'm Kevin Fournier, senior captain, 160 pounds. Hi, my name is Colin Hurry. I'm a senior captain, and I wrestle at 126 pounds. Hi, I'm senior captain Devin Godonio, 145 pounds. Hi, I'm Eric Klinger, senior. I wrestle at 170. Hi, I'm Zach Darsh, senior captain, 138 pounds. Hi, I'm Shane Mulligan, senior captain. I wrestle at 195. Hey, I'm Kalen Smith, junior. I wrestle at 160. Junior, Anthony Shanna, wrestling at 152. Hi, I'm Dylan Oxen, wrestling at weight 182. 
Hi, I'm Devontae Ramos, freshman. I wrestle at 120. Hi, my name is Ryan Hardy. I'm a sophomore, and I wrestle at 132 pounds. Hi, I'm Eric Drago, senior. I wrestle at 145. Hi, I'm sophomore Drew Gidanio. I wrestle at 113 pounds. Hi, I'm Michael Sullivan. I'm a freshman, and I wrestle at 120 pounds. I'm Zach Moody, senior, and I wrestle at 126. Hi, my name is Brendan Hardy, junior, and I wrestle at 220 pounds. Hi, I'm Mark Laranja. And I'm Sean Petrosino. We're the coaches of the Plymouth South wrestling team. And we just defeated New Bedford to go 25-0. It's the first time in school's history we've gone undefeated. Now this weekend, we travel to Braintree to compete in the Division I South sections. It just shows you what hard work can do. These kids have paid the price, and we're awful proud of them. All right, so congratulations to the Plymouth South Panthers as they get set to move on to the so-called second season. The Plymouth North program knocked off Silver Lake this week with a convincing victory. 51-9 was the final count there in that wrestling match, but the big story for Silver Lake was Tom Griffa. He came up with a victory against Plymouth North. He's a perfect 34-0 on the regular season. Congratulations to Tom. Let's go back to basketball for a moment and a quick note here about the Pembroke Boys varsity basketball team. It's been kind of a lean season for Silver Lake this winter, but they did get their first win of the season earlier this week as the Titans knocked off uh, Middleborough. And in that game, Pembroke connected on 14 three-point buckets in that game. They had all the seniors that contributed greatly to that victory, none bigger than Dom Andre. He was a perfect 5-for-5 five five from three-point land. Meanwhile, four-year guard Brendan Morse led the way for Pembroke as he threw in 17 points. So a bit of a learning curve this winter for Pembroke, but they'll certainly remember that victory as they got it all going downtown against Middleborough. Well, we showed you a sneak preview of some hockey action. Before we show it to you, we want to talk a little bit about what you're going to see. It was a matchup scheduled on Wednesday night at the Harbormark Rink between Silver Lake and Duxbury. Now, this was really heralded as a huge matchup, but unfortunately, there were some disciplinary problems for the Silver Lake hockey team, and seven members were unable to dress. If things go as planned, they should be able to play on the final date of the regular season and be around for the postseason, but only time will tell. But this really hurt the Silver Lake program, which overall is 12-3-2 now and 7-3-2 in Patriot League action. What's interesting, they went up against a very good Duxbury team. Final count was 11-0. Ouch. Okay, ouch. As Duxbury dominated this game, Trevor O'Brien had a hat trick to lead head coach John Blake's team from Duxbury, which is now nine wins and just three ties in Patriot League action, 12-1-4 overall. Last night, Tyler Powers had two goals, and Matt Murphy also scored a couple of goals for Duxbury. Now, this Duxbury program still has a handful of hockey games remaining, and they'd love to finish the regular season undefeated. They do have a big matchup with North Quincy, North Quincy had uh, a tie against Duxbury earlier this season. They'd love to hand Duxbury its first loss of the season. Now, as far as Silver Lake is concerned, this team really, well, they fell on hard times last night against Duxbury, but it's been a fine season to this point with so many kids contributing to this program for head coach Brendan Hall. And they're going to try to bounce back on Saturday. Once again, weather permitting, Silver Lake will take on Quincy this weekend. This is a team they defeated 5-4 early on in the season. All right, let's take this opportunity to show you some of the highlights as Silver Lake went up against Duxbury at the Hobbamock Rink on Wednesday night.
All right, Silver Lake in action against Duxbury. First time around, both teams at full strength. It was a 2-2 final count. Quick note about the Duxbury Girls Varsity Hockey Program. 15-1-1 overall, 9-1 as far as league action is concerned. Duxbury knocked off Sandwich this week by a score of 7-1. Hannah Murphy led the way. She had two goals and one assist. How about the play of the Pembroke Titans hockey program? They've won seven in a row, including a victory on Wednesday, 4-1 to one, against North Quincy. They're now 9-5-3 and three on the season. Going back to Duxbury, when I talked to Coach John Blake, he said his team will have to be ready. They have to take on Pembroke. I should say, take yeah, Pembroke, and they also have to face North Quincy in their final two regular season games. Then they'll take part in the Cape Cod Classic, and what a lineup of four teams involved in that action. BC High, Hingham, and Austin Prep. Great tune-ups for the postseason. All right, let's continue with our program. Let's go back to high school basketball. Now we can share with you some highlights of Rockland High School against the Carver Girls. It's been a lean year for Coach Martha Murphy's Carver Crusaders, but they hung tough against Rockland early on, actually enjoyed the lead in the first half. If our guys are ready behind the scenes, let's take a look back now at Carver against Rockland. Crusader follow number 14, Chelsea Callahan. Serrano to the line, shooting two. Chosen is good.
All right, the Carver Crusaders at home against Rockland. Unfortunately, they couldn't hold on, but they got off to a great start and threw a huge scare into the lady Rockland Bulldogs. All right, we're just about out of time. We'd like to thank you for yours. Before we close our program, I want to remind you, if you're just picking up our program this week, Tom Griffer of Silver Lake, a wrestler, completes a regular season at 34-0 with a victory against Plymouth North. The Plymouth South Wrestling Program caps off a great regular season last Monday, defeating New Bedford. They finished the regular season 25-0. Last Friday, Tucker Bouchard of Silver Lake got his 1,000th career point in high school basketball. The Duxbury girls hockey team, 15-1-1 to date. The Duxbury girls varsity basketball team, 14-1 to date. And the Silver Lake boys basketball team, under the direction of Sean Donovan, a first-year head coach, have qualified for postseason play. All right, a big thank you tonight goes out to Doug McAvery and Rich Goulart. They put it all together for us. I've been your host, Carl Pratt. Health and wisdom from the video sports page.